Yeah, thank you, Ole, for this opportunity again after summer last year. I mean, you already mentioned like nearly everything. Um, but I think I will have some more nice examples. It's nearly 12 o'clock lunchtime. Um, I'm glad that you're still here. Not too hungry now. But um, I'm pretty sure that I'm giving you some examples, some information about our shows and some showcases we also have downstairs here, um, which will bring you some thought, which hopefully bring you some thoughts um, about how to come from tech to fashion, because that's our goal, that's our aim today, um, to make sure that um, we get in touch with you, especially with fashion designers, but also with interested people um, of the uh, fashion and the technology industry, to bring something together which um, has been kind of divided um, the last years, unfortunately. And um, our, our goal from everybody, and especially from, from uh, the premium group and uh, Anita Tillmann, is um, to make sure that we have a good um, collaboration, everybody, to, to bring or to have um, one step forward after the next one. And um, she said, Anita Tillmann said, welcome to the future of fashion, and she's absolutely right. But I need to add that this future you can already, or you, have, you would have had the chance to see it um, at our show in Frankfurt at Tech Textile, which is biannual, and this time um, it's in May again in Frankfurt. You would have had the chance to see these technologies over the last 10, 15 years already, and, um, but so far the show was not, I would say, like sexy enough maybe. Um, so this is our chance and our opportunity to um, show you that it would be worth to come to Frankfurt in May. <laughs> And why that is the reason, I'm going to show you with some more examples um, I've brought with me. And my lecture will be followed by um, Sabine Gimpel from the Textile Research Institute, um, Greiz. And she will give you some more examples of um, smart textiles and how you make textiles smart in general. Um, followed by Andreas Röpert, who is the CEO and the uh, managing director of Interactive Wear. And Interactive Wear is a very interesting company um, cooperating, for example, with Borgner or with Zenia already um, to make sure that technologies which are already available um, will come to life with fashion. And with all these um, interesting topics um, we're going to bring to you, I hope um, we will be able to open your minds and to make sure that um, you see what possibilities are already available. And last but not least, um, it's our aim to make sure that when you hopefully come to Frankfurt in May, that um, you join us and that you, that you challenge our exhibitors, which are from the technical textiles um, industry, that you challenge our exhibitors and to yeah, kind of hack the fashion or to hack the textiles and make them, make them to your textiles. Make sure that your ideas will come alive and make sure that um, whatever you have in mind, what kind of technology ideas you think about, that they will um, become real. And I'm pretty sure that um, our exhibitors in Frankfurt will be able to support you, to help you, and to make sure that um, a vision or a dream will um, come true. Before I start with this, um, little topic, which it's a tech topic. Um, when our lecture is ready so far, I'm going to show you some more interesting details. Um, I've already mentioned it um, to Ole before. I in May, we're going to invite you for a space trip, living in space, mission to Mars. All of you know that Elon Musk said in 10 years, we're going to travel to Mars. And I can tell you without technical textiles or textiles at all, that wouldn't be possible. And we will have a showcase in May in Frankfurt um, how it's possible with technical textiles to travel to Mars. And later on, I will show you a little movie what we, um, what we did last week already. Um, hopefully, you will enjoy it. But now let's start with some interesting um, examples. This is from the technology, textile technology industry, the solar trees. Um, if you have visited the um, World Expo in Milano in 2015 and the German Pavilion, maybe you would have seen or you would have been able to see um, the organic photovoltaic technology. Uh, it was part of the, whole, um, of the whole German Pavilion and it's a technology where um, you can have the sun ready for your um, textiles, or not only for the textiles, also for architecture, for buildings, um, for public spaces, for example, and to bring electricity to um, whatever you need. And the main advantage of this organic photovoltaic technology is that it's super flexible and it's very easy to adapt. It's very easy to process it on textiles. 
And one example I have brought with me is um, the Pink Bionic Smart Top from a um, fashion student from Hochschule Niederrhein, the University of Applied Sciences. And she did this top using these organic photovoltaic technology. And the nice idea behind is um, she saw this technology in Frankfurt at Tech Textile, and she discovered it, and she got the idea like, hmm, if there's a chance to get electricity to buildings or to, um, to architectural um, uh, stuff, maybe it's also possible to use the, this technology for closing, and that's what she did. And she did it in a very nice way. Um, you can see that um, the real idea behind was how to um, load or how to get electricity to my phones, but it's not only about phones, it's also about heating system, for example, um, it's about um, all whatever you can imagine in terms of electricity um, to bring it or to combine it with your fashion, with your clothing. Another um, nice topic is the sublima sublimation uh, printing, it's a digital printing technology. Parallel to Tech Textile is a show called Text Process. It's all about um, how to process textile and flexi flexible materials. And the digital printing is a real trend um, in this area. And this sublimation printing is um, very interesting when it comes to make real colors uh, and bring them um, alive to textiles and um, to your fashion. And just as a quick example, oh, sorry. That was too. Uh, that was too far. Um, just a quick example with um, the Converse um, chucks. Um, there you can see the white one, which was brought um, to Epson because Epson is the technology partner behind that. And at the Epson booth, there were these white um, chucks. And with the sublimation printing, um, they would have been able to um, easily adapt every picture you brought with yourself. So if you had your phone with you saying like, hey, that's a nice um, picture of my garden, um, I love these palm trees or whatever, um, they would have been able to um, bring it um, live on your shoe. And this is not only limited for shoes, of course. You can bring it on shirts, you can bring it on uh, pa pants, you can bring it on maybe bed linen. Um, so when you like to snuggle in your, in your blanket, um, that's also possible with your latest um, holiday um, picture. So these kind of ideas, um, of course, it's just kind of a vision or just like a, like a funny idea, but the possibilities behind that are real already, the technologies are real, and they're just waiting for you. They're just waiting for you to make sure that um, you are able to, to um, see them and to work with them. The conductive silver yarns, as they look here, are super, super boring. They're silver, okay, looks nice, but in fact, the way you can use them, for example, in medicine for antibacterial closing is amazing. And it's not only for antibacterial closing, um, there are some more examples. I need to check, honestly. I don't have them all in mind. Um, it's for antibacterial um, wraps for human and veterinary medicine. It's for anti-static floor coverings for the aerospace industry. It's for seat heating in cars. Um, you can use them for wallpapers, for electromagnetic shielding used in buildings, for example. And also, when you are an important politician or a celebrity, um, you can apply them in your smartphone covers that they shield the smartphones um, from data theft. And the advantage of these silver yarns is that they are super flexible um, in terms of processing and when you want to use them. And they can be bent, uh, bent better than uh, copper yarns, for example. And this is a very nice idea from one fashion designer, uh, Lina Vasong. She's an engineer, but also a designer and author. And um, she is um, connected with Electro Couture and the studio, which are supporting fashion tech as well. And she was using these um, silver yarns in her monitor dress. And the idea behind this monitor dress is that um, you, can, um, you can transfer your heartbeat on your clothing. So um, the LEDs here, the digital area where you can see in the middle, the blue one, um, is really linked with your heartbeat or with your, with your vital um, situation. And based on that, um, you can kind of showcase how you feel, for example. Again, this is just a visionary idea, but it just shows how uh, technology and the fashion or design idea um, can be linked in, um, in general. And 
the analog impulse, um, which, main, which main emanates from uh, muscle activities of the heart, can be converted to digital signals. And it's not only linked with the heartbeats. You can link that with your whole um, vital um, body signals in total. And this kind of idea just um, should, should showcase um, how a connection between the user or like the, the end consumer and the fashion could be easily adapted um, for the future and how this um, could um, be showcased, um, for example, in the retail stores. And just imagine that when somebody is wearing a T-shirt or a nice jacket for the very first time and you get a real connection of your hopefully um, faster heartbeat then, then I'm pretty thrilled that you will be um, involved emotionally, emotionally in, a very, in a very nice way. When it comes to um, automotive industry, the automotive industry is for sure one of the most innovative industries. And um, it's all about feeling cozy in the inner um, space of a car or of a train or of a, in, a, in, a, in an airplane. And which is very important for the future, especially when you go outside now and it's freezing cold. Um, a modular textile heating system which could be also used for heated upholstery and interior heating for the mobility sector. And this heating system is already available in a way that you can easily adapt it um, for your um, fashion, which is about um, to get designed. And the producer, or one of the producers um, of this heating system is uh, Foster Rohner from Switzerland. We brought them with us here to Fashion Tech Conference last year in summer um, already. And um, this idea of coming from automotive to fashion, um, it's not only limited to textile heating system, it's also um, easily adaptable with um, lighting systems, for example, or with communication systems. But here with this modular textile heating system, I've brought an example with me um, by Moon Berlin. Um, they are also uh, um, connected uh, with us and with Fashion Tech. And this is an idea of heat yourself up. It's a Kashmir code with a heating system um, internally. And again, this is just an idea of how to hack a technology with, which is already available and bring it live with, 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 with your ideas, with fashion you have in your mind or with um, clothing systems you, you um, think about and you try to imagine. Another technology you will be able to um, see in Frankfurt at Tactic Seal is the Tyler, Tailored Fiber Placement, TFP, which is also used for seat heatings in the um, automotive sector, for example. And the idea behind that is um, that this uh, tailored fiber placement is um, based on the principle of sewing for continuous placement of um, fibrous material. And the technology is also used to create ultra-light and ultra-strong composite structures for automotive and aerospace industries. And um, one of the exhibitors is Tajima, who is exhibiting um, at, at Tech Textile. And they already invented this fiber in the 1990s. And um, it just happened within the last years um, that um, some fashion designers um, have found this technology and brought it um, to life in their, in their designs. And this is something uh, we've showcased, for example, um, by Professor Barbara Lane. She's the director of the Studio Subtela at the Hexagram Institute in Canada. And this is a keyboard dress. And the heating system or the electricity system is not only linked or only um, directly di directed to um, the heating system, it's also to connect it with, uh, with some electricity um, uh, ideas, for example, and here this uh, keyboard dress is easily adaptable um, with a link to fashion that um, she got, Miss uh, Professor Lane got the machine, machinery from uh, Tachima to use it for her smart fashion project, projects and this touchpad of the dress interacts, for example, with iPads and displays and um, the messages which you are sent from your iPad um, to the to the keyboard dress, and it's um, shown on your on your chest, um, for example. And the keyboard part itself was made with the help of an embroidery machine, um, Philicon Systems by Tachima, and with the help of the TFP technology, um, it's as I already said or mentioned, it's not only um, the wires and the conductive yarns can be applied, but also the small. Um, 
electronic um, components. Um, if you are aware of what happened at the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas um, last week, maybe you have seen um, the Oasis car study by Rinspeed, which is a Swiss-based company with e-textiles and integrated um, LEDs. And um, the idea behind this car is that the vehicle itself is not a wallflower or strictly functional like the Google car, for example, but it's more rather a next-generation car with a host of technical and visual um, treats inside. So when you sit inside, and you can maybe get a little imagination um, of this picture, um, the ultimate eye catcher is the small garden with enough space for growing radishes, for example, or even little bonsai trees. And the automotive supplier Costel adds the element of nature to the car to make it a true um, kind of third space. So it's the interior textiles or the interior industry connected with the automobile industry and also connected with um, the whole field of um, technical textiles in um, general. And when you bring this idea of how, again, the automotive industry is using textiles in a very innovative way, it easily um, leads us to a way of how LEDs can be used um, in fashion. Here it's done by Borgner Sport with the cowgirl jacket. And the cowgirl jacket is an idea, um, I mean, of course, you can use it in St. Moritz when you go skiing, for example. Um, so it's part of the woman's LED ski wear um, set. And each stand of the Western style fringe is uh, comprised of a thin string of LED lights, which also stud the seams um, of the jacket. And altogether, over 300 LED diodes um, illuminate the fully waterproof and washable jacket. And that's also very important. This jacket is waterproof and it's washable um, because the last years we were really struggling with um, the washing effects of, or the, the, the washability of, of um, clothing and this um, technologies, but it's getting better, really it's getting better, and um, we're pretty sure that within the next years we are able to have new technologies which you can um, discover in Frankfurt, um, new technologies with, which are uh, washable at all. And the cowgirl jacket garnered such positive uh, public response that Bogner eventually decided to promote it from set custom uh, to limited editions collector's piece, which is now available um, to the public, but the pricing so far is only available on request. Um, I don't have it now, but um, give just Bogner a call and maybe they're going to tell you. And the latest example I brought with me from the technical textile field is used in agriculture to cover young plants. So even when you think about um, some farming ideas and when you try to um, grow up little potatoes, um, you can also have the link with fashion. And this te technical textile which is used here is also used in a project, it's called Cover Me Softly from Julia Edich, also from Hochschule Niederrhein. And it was showcased um, in 2015 at Tech Textile at our so-called um, innovative apparel show, which is a catwalk, where um, four international colleges are showcasing um, fashion, which is made of um, technical textiles. And the idea behind um, this project is um, that it's only one ex that it's made from a special technical textile used in agriculture and it not only um, it's not only covering young plants it's also covering your body and your neck and your whole body and um, this this trend of hacking technologies of technical textiles. It's only one example for the variety of technical textiles exhibited at Tech Textil, and um, our show offers a wide field of um, application areas. For example, um, architecture, environmental protection, industry, medicine, mobility, packaging, also sports. And all these ideas um, will be showcased in Frankfurt for Tech Dixie and also in the Innovative Apparel Show. And, um, and when I say, when I say um, four international college, um, colleges, um, the schools in 2017 in Frankfurt will be from Germany, from Portugal, from France, and from Italy. And there will be also a public award. So if you can make it to Frankfurt, you will be able to vote for the best idea. And maybe Cover Me Softly will be showcased then um, next year at, uh, or in summer at the Fashion Tech Conference again. So this is it for the moment from um, my side. 
Um, I would like to hand over now to Sabine Kim Gimpel from the um, Textile Research Institute Greiz, and she will tell you something about smart textiles and how it is about the de development and research um, theme. Thank you. Timo, thank you for the nice introduce. Yes, my name is Sabine Gimbel. I come from the Textile Research Institute in, in Greiz, and I'm a researcher and engineer. How textiles get smart? Textiles are nice, warming, protecting, but smart? Are they this? If textiles are sensory and actuating, heating, interactive luminescent, and when, she, when they communicate with the environment, we say textiles are smart. And now, sorry, I must read. I have too much data and numbers in my lecture, and it must read. <laughs> what is the history of smart textiles? In the middle of the 19th, Flexible electronics were neat, and they should light and flexible. And the TIDV developed in a flexible tape to measure the water in a dam. Copper wires were interwoven, and electrical components were soldered. But thin wires broke in the weaving process. It was very bad. The solution for this problem was a conductive thread and not wires. My colleague, Dr. Neudeck, developed a textile electroplating process, and so a polyamide with a silver cover, we say it uh, was originated. The first high conductive thread was named Elitex in the TIDV, and therefore Elitex thread gets the basis for many smart textiles. The first circle it was weaved and also antennas were weaved. And in 2000, the first textile RFID transponder were produced. It was a little revolution in the expert words. In the next steps, LEDs were contacted on the textiles. The self-luminous textiles were developed. It was a nice effect, we show it. And it were used in protecting clothing home textiles, and medicine textiles, and also sometimes in fashion. With conductive threads, jackets can be heat. Textile electrodes can be grasped. The vital parameters or muscle can be stimulated. Or back pains can be heated, and much more. Research institutes. And what are the research projects? I give you some examples. There are a few obstacles between smart textiles and sex for the market launch. This include customers' demands, lack of reliability, high costs, low reproducibility, and they need improved precision. For several years now, TITV Kreitz has been focusing on the development of automated product production processes. One of this is a functional sequin devices technology. The technology promises to be the simple solutions. This innovation is based on a sequin, that is a flexible substrate, and a LED is on it. Light emitting textiles equipment with LSD, with, L with LED, and standard embroidery machines can be produced in one automated process. The machine stitch the electrical contactor, pads with alien textures, positions and connects the LEDs, and on the textiles. The automatic parts feed ensures precise positioning and more process safety as well as consist quality. The other project, a project with designers. We need other methods in the research. 
the present development of a new smart textiles products need other methods. Here, the research institutes are working in interdisciplinary cooperation. On the Network Future Text projects, were forces the cooperation between the research industry, the, un the research institutes, sorry, the industry, and the designers. With new intersectoral pools of expertise and decentralized platforms for technology, the objective is serial protection on an industrial scale. In open innovation processes, the users are included, and the approach should speed up the textiles innovations and inventions. Google and Levi's developed interactive textiles. You know it. So skeptics may have adopted the breakthrough of smart textiles. The news that Google and Levi's are developing interactive textiles should give them pause for thought. Therefore, major income companies from many industries are considering the use of smart textiles materials. In the summer, of 2014, Google used the opportunity of the Developers Conference IQ to introduce the interactive textiles. The project is called Chagar. The jeans made by Levi's react to touch, which basically gives them touch functions unlike displays. Simple gestures such as tapping or sweeping, the fabric relay signals to uh, tiny chips via conductive threads and on to a smartphone via wireless transfer. For instance, user could mute calls without taking out the phone. Yes, it's a long way from the idea to the product. I would like to show the way from a medical textile product for medication-free treatment of chronic back pain. In 2004, the idea was burn electrodes to make with conductive threads. Two aided projects began in TRTV after four years textile electrodes were developed. And in 2009, doctors from the University Hospital in Bonn became attentive by lectures and publications from us. The search is a solution for a selective stimulation for a high local stream sick directly under the skin surface, not with the metal points, but with the flexible, breathable materials, a textile. In 2012, the company Pomedis cooperated with us. Together, we developed electrodes for the back bed. Various clinical studies from doctors and the CIA certification must follow. 2014, Bomedes backband for therapy of chronic back pain was on the market. 10 years, 10 years have passed since the first idea to the product. It is a short time, I say it, a new for a new product development. Yes, you need a long brace for these things. What is the forecast, the market outlook? Almost all Germany textiles research institutes and many Fraunhofer institutes in different research segments have smart textiles in their portfolios. Around the world, developments in the US, UK, Australia, Canada, Switzerland, Netherlands, and so on, have caused, caused quite a stir. Different forecasts see great potential for the key markets, of sport and fitness, medicine and healthcare, military applications, protective and clothing, as well as home and lifestyle. Sales projected to be US dollars 1.8 billion by 2021 and more than 3 billion by 2026. I hope it. Yes, and now some examples for products. The biometric hexoskin shirt in preventive medicine, health monitoring and care service, the digital revolution is on the horizon. 
Health apps for smartphones and watches have become lucrative business in the US. Besides clothing, textiles play an important role besides sensor watches. One example is the Canadian fitness shirt Hexoskin. The Hexoskin smart shirt tricks will almost invisible electrodes your heart rate, bracing rate, speed, cadence, and other workout data, and shows it in real time via combine on the app. The app could use and the could the tracker device that comes included real time. With the app, you understand how you can optimize your training. And the other nice example for sport fans are the costumes from Eliana Savchenko and Robin Salkovi. Eliana and Robin were the four fault world feature skating champions. And in 2013, they changed their fans in Europe and Asia, with especially for they developed LED luminous costumes. The costumes has 400, uh, 500, 500 LEDs were developed from the company Germans in Chemnitz and from the TV in Kreuz. And the original costume you can see in the fourth floor. Smart textiles, sensory, actuating, heating, luminous sand, or interactive, combined with mobile devices and user-friendly apps, will conquer in the future market. Reliable products, market-ready technology solutions, and economical automates production are the prerequisites. The coming years will definitely bring more excitement. I think so. Thank you for your attention. Hi, <clears throat> I'm Andreas Röpert. I'm uh, the co-founder and CEO of Interactive Wear. Uh, Interactive Wear is an, uh, let's say, kind of spin-off from Infineon technology. That means here comes the nerd. Um, or let's say uh, we are the guys uh, who bring the rubber on the road. Um, the background, um, Infineon comes uh, uh, up with uh, uh, research uh, issues. Uh, where are the semiconductors coming in, in the future, in 2000, so uh, let's say 17 years ago, and they started a lot of research programs, and one of the most successful uh, was bringing semiconductors into, uh, in, into fabric, into clothes. And um, uh, we bought from Infineon in 2005 uh, um, uh, this department with all the technology patents and engineers. And from there, uh, we are serving um, the uh, apparel industry uh, with more than 100 projects on the market. And um, we are doing the whole system production as a one-stop shop. And I will tell you a little bit of uh, let's say, lessons learned and what we think is necessary for fashion designers uh, to make successful products uh, in, in this area. Uh, the first lesson learned also from, from Infineon was uh, uh, smart textile marketing is very successful. Infineon Technologies had, uh, uh, with this research, uh, it was a research, so no product development, only research activities. Uh, and they had in the financial year 2003 to 2004, 25% of their market retention uh, to the variables. And they showcased in the Avantex uh, and uh, so the, the, uh, what's now Tech Textile. And, um, it, it was uh, the, the best uh, marketing, um, let's say, uh, investment they ever made uh, from, from research. Uh, other companies uh, show also, like Xenia, one of our major companies, uh, that uh, bringing um, ICANN products, bringing technology merged into uh, apparel is very, very successful 
uh, you can use it actively for marketing, and if you use it, you have great success. Uh, the second point, uh, if you want to develop products, be sure what you want, what is your target. And uh, there are very different, uh, very different approaches um, that our customers have. We have here on the right side, let's say, more the fashion industry where design uh, um, plays the most uh, um, effective role. We have here on, on the left side more the functional guys where the function uh, is key. We have in the bottom uh, the solutions uh, that focus also on, on costs uh, to offer um, uh, the products more on the price point. And on the top, uh, we have the solution that offer on the effect uh, that means on the product. So to be concrete uh, with Xenia, Xenia always develops icon products uh, which uh, showcases new functionalities uh, that nobody else has. So you are the first to have it at the moment. Um, we have developed a heated jacket uh, with wireless charging. So you hang your jacket on, on the hanger and it's get, getting charged. So um, that means design, user experience, the whole product, positioning, marketing is key. Um, another approach is shown uh, from Bogner. You can see it on the Tech Textile booth uh, 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 downstairs at the fourth floor. Uh, it's a very clean, very easy jacket uh, with a simple heating uh, system uh, which works very well and which fits ideally to, to, to a very clean designed jacket. On the other hand, um, ski boots, ski soles, heating uh, goes in large numbers, so cost is the main driving factor. Or the same heating for sports. Uh, this is an Adidas solution for the UK cycling team, um, which uh, uh, hopefully had some contribution to the gold medals uh, in, in Brazil uh, last year. So that means here you have a solution where you really focus on functionality and it's clear uh, that uh, the, the athlete between uh, the warm-up and the competition really keeps his muzzle warm and uh, you have uh, uh, very different approaches here and here. So be clear what you want, be clear what the product demands. The next point, very important, there are at least two worlds, maybe three, maybe more, uh, that you need to make successful products. Um, you have the application, with the end product, you have the textile part, you have the electronics part, and in the future, more and more, you have the digital part. You have the apps, you have the cloud, the systems, uh, so th that means you have a lot of different uh, technologies, uh, and you need, if you want to make uh, products successful, you need the experts. You don't need the amateurs, you need the experts. So. Don't be shy, go into collaborations and find the right partners uh, in the domains, uh, in the techniques, in the construction, in marketing uh, to do this. Um, what we are doing to support um, people, uh, designers, product managers, companies, um, depends always what is your expectations, where do you stand, um, so we have uh, fast entry workshops, uh, getting familiar with wearable electronics in a nutshell from half a day to two days workshops. Um, we uh, uh, discuss with you your ideas, we help you build mock-ups and so on. If you have a clear idea what you are doing, uh, but not yet clear how to implement, um, we support with feasibility studies uh, uh, and there, um, uh, selecting the right technologies, uh, the right way to implement it. And this may not only uh, develop, but develop to be manufactured. Um, and there, 
uh, if you have customized solution, we can do this, we can prepare, we can uh, supervise manufacturing, or you just order components, textile cables, uh, connectors, uh, sensors, and so on. So, smart textiles in a nutshell, what we see from our experience, from the apparel designers, and what, what I would like to encourage you, there are no experts at the moment, or, or very, very few experts, that really are capable of um, making really um, use of the possibilities of technology. Uh, if you are a fashion designer, uh, you, you have a great experience of uh, working uh, with fabric, uh, reflecting the light, uh, reflecting the worm from the body, and so on. Uh, but it's a totally different issue uh, to work with active light. And there, we need experience. We need you, that, that you gain this experience, and that you are able, at the end, uh, to make usage of this technology uh, in, a, in a way uh, that it's implementable and uh, cost effectiveness uh, to make a product. Uh, for product designers, and this means really product designers, not only fashion product designers, but product designers, keep an eye on conductive textiles. My background is 30 years in the high-tech industry. I'm a software guy. I'm a system guy. I'm fascinating about conductive textiles. I'm fascinating about textiles as, as a material to build products. And uh, my, my favorite product we did uh, is a product with uh, textiles, with conductive textiles, but it's a product, it's, it's an accessory, it's, it's uh, not a garment. But it could be built with the properties of textile uh, better than with other materials. And this is a big part of the future of the te te textile, I think, uh, the tech textile shows technical textiles, and technical textiles, uh, and especially conductive textiles, are very, very interesting for the, for the future. Cooperate, collaborate. Uh, we heard it in the discussions before. There is no competition. We have a co-opetition. The market is so small, so help each other. Uh, it's much better you learn from your competition and the competition from you, but the market has to be generated, and this means every product on the market help, even if it's come from your competitor. The mass production from smart textiles is still an issue. There are several points. We, don't, we are in the niche market, so that means the niche market don't have the quantities that is necessary really to optimize production. And so we need to close this chasm. And um, uh, this will last a little bit. Uh, uh, um, and, and this is not only know-how. This is really um, the, the um, market pool we need uh, to make this happen. Uh, it was mentioned Fosterona. Fosterona is our strategic partner for, for embroidery. We could do the heating systems we have seen here for much lower cost than today if we add two zeros to the production size. Uh, but uh, we need there to come. So, and, and at the moment, we are running typical batches, 1,000 to 5,000 units. If we run 100,000 units, it's a completely different story. But we need some uh, products, some very successful products on the market to come there. And the major task uh, when you bring electronics in, in the garment is you need power. Unfortunately, you need power. And this means you need batteries and you have to hassle with the batteries and you have to hassle with connectivity. And um, we learn from the automotive industry, connectivity is a cost driver. That means if you have seen the, the code with 500 LEDs, means 500 
uh, LEDs connected means 1,000 connections to wires. And 1,000 connections has to be done, uh, has to be solid, uh, and uh, this is a huge cost driver. So there we need other technologies, we need experience, we need automation to come there. Um, last but not least, also here in the discussion already mentioned, um, everything will be digital. Uh, everything will be connected. And this means for you as a designer, uh, have a look at the complete product. It may be a suit, it may be uh, a dress, uh, but to the dress, it's the connectivity to your smartphone. That means you have an app, and the app uh, is, is a is a part of your product. And the app has an exchange with data in the cloud, has an exchange with other customer. So also this integrated, this system uh, is part of, of your design. And this means the user experience uh, is the major point and, uh, well, uh, you have to handle this. You have to understand this. And uh, I think to cooperate there with a lot of software designers, industrial designers to make this happen. And what we see being on the market, let's say since 2000, is uh, we are still in the niche market, uh, but I'm pretty confident uh, that uh, this market will be a relevant market somewhere between 2020 and 2030. There is a market pull from augmented reality, from all the, the IoT systems, the sensors, all the big data industry is interested in the sensor data we can generate from sensors directly on the body. And so this is the market pool that will come. And hopefully we have enough experience there, and I'm quite confident to be there, that we have it on 2030. So people, the question is simple. Do you want to be stuck in the past and caught with your trousers down, so to speak, or dress for these times? Oh, I almost forgot. Activate teletransport. They're working on it. So this uh, <laughs> was a short excerpt from, from a marketing video from Senior Sport from a Bluetooth jacket. And this shows uh, how they really uh, bring uh, uh, advanced technology to the market. And um, uh, when I'm listening to ideas, then it's teletransport or other ideas, maybe one of, of the ideas. But there are a lot of ideas that are easy to implement just today. Uh, when you talk with, uh, with the right people, uh, you can make it happen. And we encourage you to do this. Go to the Tech Textile, look at all the partners uh, who offer systems there, and, and uh, build up your experience network. And I hope that at least 2020 and 2030, we will make the next thousand products together. Thank you very much. to um, Sabine um, for these industry insights. Before we're going to send you to a lunch break, um, I want to invite you to a little journey to Mars. Normally it takes you nine months, but with us um, it's only two minutes. And we've prepared a little video. Normally it's virtual reality and it's just a teaser. During Tech Taxi in Frankfurt in May, you will have the full virtual reality experience of this video together with the uh, experience on Mars. And this is just to showcase what we think um, could be able with technical textiles when it comes to a space journey. Welcome to Mars. I'm looking forward to meeting you down here. In preparation for your landing, we are currently receiving data from Earth. Take a look behind you on your left. Have you seen the large golden net? 
It's our antenna made of a technical textile and it has some interesting features. The time has come. The capsule is about to be recovered. Get ready to enter the Martian atmosphere. See you soon. So when the idea is, if you join us in Frankfurt, you will also see what will happen on Mars. And it's not only about mobility, architecture or agriculture, it's also about fashion. And I'm very proud that we have a cooperation with ESA, the European Space Agency, and a project with ESMOD, which is called Couture in Orbit. So you will see the link fashion to tech again, and you will see how the Martians in maybe 10 years will be dressed. Thank you very much.